I don't know about you, but I've noticed that the older I get, the less I like change. Now, sometimes change is good. It's for the best. In fact, it's very necessary. But sometimes change can be very annoying. It can be confusing, chaotic, and really disruptive. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I have to tell you the truth. This coming year, uh, Medicare is going to see some of the biggest changes that we've ever seen in 59 years, especially for those of you that are on Medicare Advantage plans. And it's not going to be for the best. It's going to be annoying, confusing, chaotic, and very disruptive. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you why this is going to happen, when this disruption is going to occur, and how you can be prepared for the disruption. All right, I want to begin our video by talking about, first of all, the when will all this disruption begin. Now, to really understand the when, let me just give you some information about Medicare Advantage plans. When you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, and you may know this or not, but these are also called C plans by the government, all right? And so when we're on a Medicare Advantage plan, it is only good for one year, one year, and that would be a calendar year, and that's going to be between January 1 and uh, December 31st. And so because um, uh, it's a calendar year plan, what happens is the government says uh, to the insurance companies, they can really change whatever they want to change from year to year. And again, that's why we're going to see so much disruption this year, because these are only calendar year plans. And so what's going to happen is this. We have this thing called the AEP. This stands for an annual enrollment period. And that period of time uh, is October 15th through December the 7th. So when someone is on an Advantage plan, as well as an annual prescription drug plan, this is the time in which they can make switches to their plan. The plan that they switch during this time uh, would go into effect January the 1st of that next year, and then again, we're going to be on that plan for 2025. So my point is, this disruption is going to be all about 2025-year plans, but if someone's going to make some kind of a switch, they must do it during these dates. All right, so what's going to happen is this. A couple things uh, that you'll notice going on is this. You're going to have a lot of agents that are going to be talking about the uh, disruption, and rightfully so. They should be talking about it, and a lot of ads as well. Now, the truth is, sometimes Sometimes they're going to give helpful, honest, reliable information. Other times they're just trying to stir up emotions to try to get you to enroll into some type of a new plan. Okay, and so you just got to be aware of that. And again, there's some very honest agents in this business for sure, and some ads that'll be very helpful and productive. But there's going to be a lot of this going on, so you're going to be aware of that. Now, what you need to do though to really identify uh, with the changes to your plan is this: you need to be looking for what we call your ANOC. ANOC, and that's called an Annual Notice of Change. And what uh, plans have to do, Advantage and Drug Plans, because they're only one year, they have to notify you of the changes they're going to make for the next year, in this instance for 2025. Now this ANOC letter normally starts arriving sometime around September 1st through uh, maybe September the 30th uh, or so, that, that range. That's the norm. Now, because of all the changes, uh, I think we may get these a little bit later this year, but most certainly you should have this no later than October the 15th, okay? Hopefully you'll have it sooner, but you should have it by then. And if you don't have it by then, you want to be sure to call the customer service line on the back of your insurance card to let the company know, hey, I did not receive my annual notice of change, and they'll send you a copy of that, okay? And so a whole point is this. This is going to happen very, very soon, and as the market gets disrupted, don't you, we don't want you to get wrapped up in the emotion of it, let's get wrapped up in first the facts of what your plan is going to be changing. Now, some of them are going to change drastically. Others uh, are going to change, not maybe drastically, but certainly some changes that could affect you very seriously. All right, so that's the win. Now let's go to the why behind the disruption. Okay, so I'm going to list for you actually 10 reasons. There's probably more than that, but I kind of summarized them into 10 reasons uh, that uh, would be the why behind this disruption. Okay, and by the way, just so you know, these aren't any particular order of importance. They're just things that are going on right now in the market. So number one is this. Uh, you will hear ad uh, Advantage companies and insurance companies blame all the disruption on less funding. Now, it is true uh, that the uh, companies did not get quite the funding that they were expected, but they still got an increase in their funding. Okay, so it's not all this. I know insurance companies, well, they're going to blame it all on that. And it is, a fact, less funding than what they hope, but that's not the big culprit here. So let's go to number two. 
and talk about some reality. Number one, I mean, excuse me, number two here, uh, most certainly uh, Advantage plans have been around uh, since really 1999, but they really got in full force and began to be popular starting around 2003. Today now, over 20 years, now 50% of the market uh, of Medicare recipients are on Medicare Advantage plans. So a lot of these people have been on Advantage plans ever since they turned 65. And so they've been on these plans 10, 15 years. And so what's happening, uh, that group is aging. What happens uh, as we age, we're gonna have more claims. And so these insurance companies are experiencing more claims uh, for sure. The third issue here would be higher morbidity. Now morbidity just simply means that someone's been diagnosed with some kind of an illness or a disease, they're sick. And so we're seeing higher morbidity. Why? Because of the aging population. What does that mean? Well, this means there's more claims on these plants, okay? And so that means these companies' uh, medical uh, loss ratios are increasing uh, because they're having to pay more money out. And again, that's gonna cause the plans to change as well. Number four, we also are seeing companies right now, now notice this, that are in unprofitable markets. Uh, you got to remember something. These Advantage companies um, are for-profit companies, and I don't fault them for being for-profit. That's just the reality of our capitalism. I love capitalism in our society. Uh, but the point is, as they uh, have a product in a certain market, uh, their desire is to make the profit margin that the government allows them. No problem with that. But what happens, sometimes they can't make a profit in those markets. And sometimes they will stay in the market because they have other markets that are more profitable. And they'll stay in that market. But now we're not seeing that. Now what's happening, they're identifying these unprofitable markets. And if they don't feel like they can ch change the plan to make it profitable, they're just simply pulling out of that market. Uh, I know of a market right now where one company uh, could not make it and um, uh, they're pulling out of the market totally. And uh, there were 35,000 people almost that are going to lose their plan uh, by that one company. And this is going to happen all over the country uh, this uh, plan year for 2020 25. So the carriers are doing all they can to make a market profitable, changing the plans. And if they can't, they're going to pull those plans. And that's why we're going to see a lot of plans being dropped because there's a tremendous amount of unprofitable markets. Most of the companies right now are saying they're going to drop 5 to 10% of their market base. That's a lot and lot of people. Let's go to number five. There's also been a lot of abuse by the advantage companies. Uh, and this is really nothing new. This has been going on for years. And how they abuse the system primarily is uh, they get paid more uh, when a patient is uh, sicker, is more sick. And so what they do is they will look for a way to um, uh, use codes and kind of upcode uh, to make that person more sick, sometimes even what they really are. Um, and they get a greater amount of funding from the federal government. And so again, they're, they're abusing the system. Well, they've been caught doing this. That's why there's been a lot of lawsuits and a lot of them are settling uh, with the government because they know they're guilty of this. And so what's happened, they're not gonna be able to abuse the system as much. And so they're gonna have to adjust their numbers uh, because uh, that money is going to to uh, leave their pockets, all right? And so that's a, a, a reason. Also, number six, pre-authorization problems. This is probably one of the biggest problems uh, for those that are on Advantage plans. Uh, about 70 to 72% of the time, when someone needs a, a healthcare service and they're on Advantage plan, that service, uh, they're not gonna receive it unless uh, the an insurance company agrees, a, approves it. And so what happens with Advantage plans is uh, if I need a knee replacement, hip replacement, CAT scan, MRI, extended skilled nursing stay, uh, the doctor makes a recommendation to the Advantage plan, uh, but the Advantage plan has the final say so. So they have to agree and they have to approve or they're not gonna pay for it. And many times they approve things, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes they delay coverage. Sometimes they just flat deny and say, we're not gonna cover. Uh, we don't believe you need a knee replacement. We want you to go to therapy for nine months. Um, had a lady who needed a full hip replacement. They wouldn't approve it, but they would pay for a rod as part of her surgery, and that's it. And so the point is pre-authorizations are a real problem. And so again, uh, uh, they, they've uh, been caught uh, abusing that particular system. And so what's happening is they're cracking down on them. Now, pre-authorizations are still going to exist. Uh, some of the carriers are gonna cut back maybe 10 or 20% of those pre-authorizations, but they're not going away. Uh, but again, they're not gonna be able to abuse that system. So what's happening now, uh, presently in 2024, a normal pre-authorization uh, insurance company has uh, uh, two weeks to approve it. They're, they're gonna uh, shorten that to a week. Emergency situation pre-authorization now is 72 hours as it's always been. And so what's happening is they're realizing they're gonna be held more accountable. And so again, they're gonna have to change their plans um, uh, to respond to uh, uh, more healthcare services being approved, okay? And again, pre-authorization still exists, but uh, we're gonna see some uh, changes for sure there. 
second. Let's talk about number seven, and that's this. This is called underutilization of perks. Now, when we talk about Advantage plans, one of the main things that people uh, like about them is the fact that they have some perks. They'll have normally some kind of a dental allowance or maybe hearing aids, or they may include a gym membership or uh, maybe a vision allowance. And so they throw in these perks uh, and those perks really have grown through the years. I can assure you in 2025, those perks are not gonna be near as rich. We're gonna see some uh, fewer perks with the plans. And so the reason the insurance companies have been able to keep adding to the perks all the way through this year Year is because there was a high uh, underutilization of the perks. Why? Well, because sometimes to use that perk, that dental allowance or that hearing aid, you had to go to a network provider. Maybe you couldn't find a network provider or you couldn't find the hearing aid that you really liked uh, that they were going to cover. And so again, they were highly advertised but also highly underutilized. And so when the government realized, hey, we're giving these insurance companies all this money for these perks, and uh, the people aren't using them, they're uh, underutilized. And so what they're doing now is every July 1, an advantage company is gonna have to let you know, hey, you haven't been using some of your perks. And so they have to remind you, which means what? More people are gonna use some of those perks. Uh, and so that's gonna come out of the pockets of the insurance companies, all right? And so that is definitely gonna be a factor for 2025. Number eight, we're also seeing a lot of network and provider changes. We are, we are seeing whole hospital groups saying we are no longer going to take advantage plans. Doctor groups saying we're not going to take them any longer. And really the primary reason for that is this, because those docs and hospitals, they're tired of all the pre-authorizations. I've read reports where an insurance company would actually approve something through the pre-authorization process and then deny the claim. And so uh, they slow pay, they low pay. <laughs> and so uh, these providers are saying, hey, we cannot afford, we cannot afford to take advantage plans. And so you're going to see a lot of disruption with networks uh, for this year as well because providers pulling out of those plans. Number nine, also this is a big deal and that's the $2,000 spending cap that the Inflationary Reduction Act brought about to Advantage plans as well as prescription drug plans. That's the most anyone will ever have to spend out of their pocket. And so what's happening, they took, they, the government, uh, took a lot of their um, uh, spending uh, responsibility for uh, prescription drugs and they placed that over on the insurance companies. The Part D plans, the, uh, the Advantage plans, and so they're having to absorb a lot of this money that the government was spending. And so that's why we're going to see some plans that may have been a zero premium. They're going to be a higher premium for sure. And so we're going to see some adjustments in that. Why? Because now you as the consumer don't have to spend any more than 2000 But that Advantage plant now is responsible if you have some very expensive medications. They're going to have to pay more of that. Okay, so in the past they've had to share, but not a whole lot. Now, a lot of the, that share is going to come out of their pockets, and that's why they're going to have to adjust for that. And then number 10 is this, really just more CMS accountability. Uh, the government, uh, uh, when they first started and approved Advantage plans, the whole idea was the private sector could come in and provide uh, health care benefits at a better, uh, higher quality at a better price. And that has never happened. It's not happening today. Uh, and so the point is CMS is saying, hey, we're spending more money for those that are on Advantage plans, and we can't really see that the uh, quality of care is higher, and it's certainly not cheaper. And so they're going to hold them accountable. So this uh, insurance company is having to respond to that. All right, so these are some of the reasons why behind all the disruption. All right, now let's talk about what you can do about it. Hey, if you found this video helpful and if you want to see more Medicare information just like it, then go below, right below the video, and you can give us a thumbs up as well as subscribe to our channel. And every time I put a new video, which is about two every week. You'll be notified of that video and others just like you who need this vital information will get it as well. All right. So the first thing you can do about it is this, and I've already talked about it, but I want to remind you because this is very important. Be sure to read thoroughly your annual notice of change. What have they changed? Is there going to be a premium this year, 2025? Is there going to be a deductible this year? What are your co-pays? What are your co-insurance? In other words, you need to find out exactly what's going to cost you to go to the hospital. How about if you have an outpatient surgery? What will that cost you? And then annual notice of change is going to reveal all the financial terms, your co-pays, your co-insurance. Okay, what are those things you're going to be uh, uh, responsible for? They're also going to reveal to you what your max out of pocket is. I can assure you we're going to see some increases this year because the way Advantage plans work is um, uh, you 
pay as you go. So we have a daily hospital copay. We have a uh, outpatient surgery copay. We see a specialist. We have a copay. Uh, we get durable medical equipment. We probably pay 20%. So copay, copay, copay until we hit the max out of pocket. So pay attention to that. In other words, what is going to be your risk amount if you were to have cancer or to have some kind of a serious issue? So my point is be sure to take the time to read the details of the annual notice change. That is number one. Now, uh, if you like the plan still and you're convinced it's still going to be in your best interest, then what happens is you don't have to do anything. Why? Because if you like what you see, that plan will auto renew. OK, you don't have to do anything. Um, now, the insurance company will probably send you a new car, but it'll be the same plan. Uh, they may give it a different number. But the point is, you have to do nothing if you like the plan auto renews and that new plan will go into effect January 1. All right. Now, I think that's going to happen for some of you. Others of you, that's not going to happen. You're not going to like the plan. You're not going to want that to auto renew after you read your ANOX. So what will you do? Well, you have the opportunity to be able to be on an Advantage plan right now and you can switch to that Advantage plan. All right. Now, the best time to do it, especially if your 2025 plan is not going to be very attractive, would be again those dates of October 15th through December the 7th. And you can make an application for a different Advantage plan. As long as that Advantage plan is in your zip code, as long as you're enrolled in Medicare A and B, you can enroll into that plan. So that's advantage to advantage. Now, let's say that you happen to enroll into a plan that you end up uh, uh, going effective January 1, and then you realize, oh, I don't really like that plan. My doctor, uh, the agent told me the doc's in the network, and they're not. Or the hospital I want to go to, drop the plan. <laughs> and so you really don't want to be on that plan, but you did enroll in that plan. So here's what happens. We do have a way out of this, and that is called the Medicare OEP. And this is January 1 through March 31st. So if by chance you make a mistake during this period of time here and you enroll into a plan to start January 1 and you don't like that, uh, that plan, then we still have a way out. So as long as you own an Advantage plan on January 1, now we have the next three months where, again, you can move Advantage to Advantage, no underwriting, and you can make that switch one time during what we call the open enrollment period. All right, and so that's what you can do about it. Now, another thing you can do, let me talk about number three, and that is this. Let's say that uh, you open the ANOC and you realize, I am tired of this Advantage Plan system. I don't want to hassle with pre-authorizations. Uh, my doc no longer takes a plan. I don't want to have to change doctors. I just don't want to be in that system any longer. So here's what happens. Now, let's suppose you've been on the Advantage Plan for a year or two, three, four, five years, some period of time, and you realize, well, I would like to return to original Medicare A and B. So what can happen, again, same time of the year, these dates here, those dates there, you actually can return to Medicare A and B, Okay, we call that original Medicare. And then what you can do is you can add a Medicare supplemental plan, Medicare supplemental plan. Now, keep this in mind. If you've been on that for a while, you know, two, three, four, five years, something like that, to make this switch to leave Advantage and to come back and pick up a Medicare supplemental plan, you are going to have to go through medical underwriting. We're actually going to have to get that approved. Now, exception would be if you live in New York, Connecticut, Vermont, Maine, or Massachusetts, they have some different rules, but everywhere else, if you're not in New York, Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, uh, Vermont, now you're going to have to be approved. So as long as your health is generally good uh, during this period of time, uh, you can disenroll from your Advantage plan, uh, you can uh, apply for a Medicare supplemental plan, and if it gets approved, then you can get out of that system, and then you, what will happen is your med sub plan then would begin January 1. Now, just so you know, from a practical standpoint, when we make application for a supplemental plan, uh, all we're going to do is uh, uh, make sure we're going to get approval. So you do nothing with your advantage. You're just simply going to see if you get approved. And then if you get approved, then we pick out a drug plan, and that will be your coverage. And then it will automatically kick out, that drug plan will automatically kick out your Medicare Advantage plan, and you'd be on that supplemental plan uh, then beginning January the 1st. All right. Now, the system, of course, is different. Uh, you don't have to worry about network providers. You don't have to worry about any pre-authorizations by the insurance company. It's a permanent plan. It's not going to change year to year to year. Uh, the only issue is you got to pay a premium for that. And some people can afford that. Some people cannot or choose not to. Uh, but that is an option that you have during this time of the year. If you're tired of that system and you want to go back to original Medicare, as long as we can uh, get you through underwriting, and we're going to have to ask you 30, maybe 35 health questions, check your medications, supply the information to the insurance 
insurance company. And if they approve you, you can make that switch as well. All right. So lastly, I want to close with this. Hey, if you come to a place where you know you're going to have to make some Medicare decisions pretty soon, the best way to do that is to click up here in this right-hand corner, and you'll have an opportunity about a book a call with one of our Medicare guides. All the guides around here, I have personally trained, and they truly are professional. They'll answer your questions, and they'll show you different Medicare options to make sure that you're confident in the decision that you make. And that's this question, and that is who it is that can help you with this switching process, either advantage to advantage or move off advantage and go to a supplemental plan. You actually have three different sources, potentially, of help. And the first one would be this. You can use what we call a call center agent. Call center agent. Okay? Now, this is uh, most of the ads you see on TV, uh, certainly online. They're always trying to get you to call it, well, you know, some 1-800-DIAL-AN-AGENT. All right. Now, I will tell you, uh, there could be some good folks that work here, but here's the problem. The problem is uh, call centers, uh, every time you call in, you get a different agent. You may talk to an agent that's been there for three weeks or three months or three years. You just never know the quality of the agent. doesn't mean they're bad people. What it means is many times they're very inexperienced. And frankly, most of the call center agents don't know anything about subs. They primarily are just kind of trying to push advantage plans because they pay a higher commission. But that's an option to call a call center. Now, folks, there's nothing wrong with doing business over the phone. But when you're calling a call center, again, it's a different agent. Sometimes it's not even an agent that's in America. You're going to be transferred to some international call center where it's difficult to even understand them. They, most of the times, I don't think they even understand Medicare, but it is an option. The second option you have is to use what we call a company captive agent. Company captive. Now, this simply means that this is an agent that is a company employee. They are captive to that company. They don't write for anyone else. So if they're a company captive for ABC Insurance Company, that's all the plans they can write, meaning they're going to have a very limited portfolio. Now, I find many times the captive agents uh, are well-trained. Um, I think they operate with integrity. But the problem is, with this here, you have no options <laughs> other than what that company is uh, offering. <laughs> that's it. And so Medicare is not one size fit all. And so we have chosen the third model here, not to be captive on purpose. We are actually independent and others like us. So we are what? We are brokers. So we're not captive to any company, but we can write for almost all the carriers. So we have selection. We have options. We get to compare. In one market, one carrier may be stronger than another. And so our clients are not uh, going to have this biased information as you would up here with a captive. We can truly approach it very unbiasedly so that we give you the accurate information uh, looking at the companies, the premiums, the stability, uh, how that carrier rates within that particular market so that our clients can pick out a plan that's going to best suit them, not best suit the company. All right. And so here's what I'm trying to teach you through this. All three of these people here are available to you. And what I want you to realize, folks, is uh, whoever you go with, the price or the premium set by the insurance company is the same. Uh, we don't set prices. Insurance companies do that. So if you go with one, two, or three, you'll pay the same. You can't save any money either with any of these, nor will you spend any more money. The price out of your pocket is always all the same. But what matters is a different level of service. What is that agent, that broker, going to do for you? Listen, a lot of companies and agents are willing to write a plan, but there's more to uh, Medicare than just writing a plan. What if you have problems? What if you have claim issues, insurance card issues, all kinds of things that come up? And so how is that person going to service you uh, after the plan is written? Sometimes you call them back and they'll never answer the phone. They're all gung-ho about writing a new plan, but they're not going to be there for you uh, when uh, you have a problem. And, and again, uh, if you find someone that's reputable, then they will be there for you. We have our own customer service department. Why? Because we know problems exist and we don't want people to have to call 1 800 dial an agent or, uh, you know, end up in China or Philippines or India or someplace trying to get a call center to take care of you. We have our own in house customer service team to take care of our clients. And again, that's what a good broker uh, should provide for you in, in regards to service. All right. And so again, you're going to reach out to someone. So reach out to someone that has integrity, that is thorough, that can explain everything, that gives you options, that's not trying to push a certain plan, but says, hey, here's what's available in your market and let's discuss those details. All right. So again, it's going to be a very disruptive market. You may be annoyed, confused. It could be chaotic, disruptive for sure. But listen, we or someone like us would be there. It'd be our privilege to be able to walk you through all the disruption to make sure that you are picking not only the best plan, but the most also most cost affordable plan for 2025.